So today I'm going to give you an insight into what my standard cold calling day would look like for my SaaS company. So what I use is a standard template when I'm actually going through discussions. So I know pretty much exactly what I'm going to say. So the goal today is to follow up with a few clients that we had spoke to previously um, who were making a final decision on whether they wanted to purchase our software or not. The main objective with cold outreach will be to get a prospect onto a demonstration where I can actually show them how our platform works. So here we go. I'm going to take you through an average cold calling session. This could go very well or very badly. So without further ado, let's hop right into it. The reason I'm cold calling today is for my startup that's just recently raised a seed round of funding. Andy Caddy is software, which is digitizing how golf caddy jobs are scheduled in clubs across the world. So without further ado, let's hop right into it. Before we start, I want to say that I've bleeped out all the names of the folks we've called just to protect our identity. Okay, so the next club we're going to reach out to is a club that have shown a lot of interest and we just need to get them across the line in terms of pricing. Um, so I had written out a bit of a template. Get me back into Notion. We had written out a, I had written out a template just as far as actually closing this objection now. Um, so they really, really like the product. It's just getting them to agree in a price now. All right, another no answer. So I'll just loop around with those guys at the end of the week. This one actually is to ring a current customer. We've recently increased our prices and we communicated with them. So this one's just to confirm that they're good to go ahead with this new price model. And so. Hello. Okay, no worries. Is he back in tomorrow? Tomorrow, yeah, yeah, back in tomorrow. Awesome, no problem. I'll give him a ring then. Thank All you. Right. Okay, thank you. Cheers. Bye. Thanks. Bye, bye. Okay. Seems that they mentioned it's a bank holiday today. October thirtieth. So it is. It's funny when you're working in a startup, you just don't realize these things. So today is actually a holiday in Ireland. So. This might explain why um, these calls are being less fruitful than we imagined, but as I say, it's real. Okay, so this is good because now I'm going to target more Scottish and English clubs just after I know that fact. Music licensing reimagined. Cork. Okay, so the clubs I'm going to be targeting now, those were the the folks that were kind of on the edge of converting. So the ones now will be relatively warm leads, um, but the goal is to get them on a demo and not necessarily to close them on the first call. I think this is actually a great exercise to do, and I would recommend it to all people, is to film your sales sessions and you'll figure out where you're actually losing time. So doing things like this, like... Um, you know, entering passcodes for HubSpot just because it logs you out and things like that. Like, this is things where you're losing time. Um, it's also good to hear yourself on sales calls. It can be painful sometimes, but um, you'll learn a lot from listening to your own voice, listening to how you object to things, to learn um, where you do struggle with things and you don't know the right answer. And what I do in that case, I'll just add it to my objections matrix so then I can look back and see um where i went wrong and what i actually need to improve Alrighty, let's go for vista golf bookings press one for member golf bookings and the starter press two for the pj professional and his team press three
tell like he's not gonna answer. Well, this is real, isn't it? Like, this is what happens sometimes at the start of a cold calling session. You might get four or five that actually don't answer. And that's absolutely fine. I would be more worried if I wasn't picking up the phone and not trying at all, um, as opposed to giving effort. And then sometimes you just don't get responses, and that's totally fine. So you just simply move on to the next one. For tour operator inquiries, press 1. For accommodation and tea time bookings, press 2. For the Canny Crow restaurant, press 3. For the golf shop, press 4. For accounts, press 5. To speak to reception, press 6. Or to hear these options again, press hash. Reimagined. Good morning. Speaking to across in uh florida at the pga show in january um i'm not sure if he's in today or not sorry if you know you sorry, uh, sorry you never that doesn't actually work here anymore all oh, right uh, gotcha yeah well the reason i was ringing is uh i run a service called handy caddy um so we help golf clubs with caddy programs and that was actually what i was discussing in florida um right. i'm wondering could you maybe pass me through to the GM currently? Um, it'd be interesting just to have a little chat. She's not in at the moment. Um, I can certainly give you an email address if you want. Uh, would there be a better time for me to ring back? I'm not sure. Back. I think Paul will go back in Wednesday, even though I guess you do some things first on Wednesday. Um, not sure for definitely, but I can let her know you called when the next place here. Yeah, for sure. Um, well, yeah, I'll ring back on Wednesday, and then if I can't get her then, then I'll maybe take an email address. Um, okay. But no, that's perfect. It's your help. Okay, right. Just out. Thank you very much. Bye now. Bye. Just ringing. So <laughs> that's that contact down the drain. I thought I had a nice little warm intro there, but um, the guy has changed golf clubs which is potentially good because I think the club that he mentioned may be a potential client for us. So, um, so that was ring back on Wednesday. They have a new general manager. So that's, that's good. That's, uh, someone else to build a relationship with. Alrighty. On to the next one, I suppose. So we are going to ring more UK clubs. Actually going to try one Irish club. So the club I'm about to ring, they were in a relationship with another club that was going to build them software similar to us. I'm not sure how that's went this season, so it's very much just a check up to see how things went and to get them on a demo. Yeah, I think after that, I think I'm going to completely abandon Irish clubs. It just seems like they're all off today. Should be a good one. Um, so this is going to be a call with a current customer. Again, we're upping our prices to a minimum of uh, $9.40 for the season. So this customer has used our platform pretty significantly this year. I'm just going to check how many jobs they've put on. Um, but I believe they've been like... Three to four hundred jobs, which is obviously small in the grand scheme of things. Find Grafana. Um, by the way, I don't know what you guys use to track metrics in terms of like product things. Um, I use a tool called Grafana, which is pretty cool. Um, so I can go into each. Essentially, going to be following the price conversation template that I've created here. I'm trying to keep them on track with that as much as possible. Quiet day for golf clubs, boys. Jeepers. Hello. Going. It's uh, hey, Graham here from Handicaddy. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Thanks, Graham. Yeah, I'm very good, thank you. 
Brilliant. Um, yeah, I, I thought I'd give you a call just to hear how the season has went for you um, and just your experience in Handy Caddy and then maybe mention just about how we'll work together next season if you have five yeah. minutes to speak. Yeah, of course I have. Yeah, yeah, no problem. No, it's gone, it's gone, it's gone well. It's, been, um, it's just been useful. I've just, um, you know, as, as we've gone along, it's, it's, worked, it's worked really well. That's that's great to hear. Um, and obviously, when you came to us at the start of the season, you were kind of mentioning that the, the caddy jobs were quite sporadic for you guys. And ultimately, yeah. the goal um, the goal was to kind of help you know streamline things a little bit more for you, and obviously, you know, give more incentive to caddies to come along. Do you think the system has helped solve that problem for you? Yeah, I think so. I mean, the big, big the biggest um, thing was it, when we started off was we did we, obviously we don't like have a have a caddy shed or anything like that. Yeah. We just got members. And I was sort of, I mean, I still to a point I had it on a, I, I had a spreadsheet I version. I used your version. Mm -hmm. And I also, I did it like belt and braces so I could sort of see at a glance where where we were. It was mainly it was mainly so that when I got something in, um, I logged it on a spreadsheet. And then I then, from that, I then put it on the old BRS system. I then put it on the, your, on the, your handicap, handicap, handicap system mm -hmm. so that I could make sure that I'd, I'd, that I'd got everything done. And then, and then I got the relevant responses back as, as I was going. Mm -hmm. Was there a was there an overall good impact in the golf club because of that? Yeah, we've got. I'll tell you. I'll tell you what. I, what I, I found, and it's and it was by and I, and I certainly didn't expect this at the beginning of the season. That having caddies increases your you get a lot more US um, tour operators coming through you. Okay. Because of this, there's a lot of US golfers only want to play golf where they can get a caddy. Of course. Because I because I because I'd gone to them and said we, we're now doing caddies. Yeah, um, I've got an impact, so we actually we actually got like, like a high green fee on the back of it. Fantastic. So, so it sort of ramped up like that. So obviously it's it's like good all round. So then you know you, you get that through. Suddenly you get a new book in for eight people for a week on a Thursday because then you, you because you can provide caddies. I would then obviously put the thing out on the across it all and, and be mm -hmm. able to supply it. So it was all right. I mean it it was I have, I probably had twenty five to thirty I think in the in the pot of, of caddies to use yep. and probably on the most I could sometimes go to was 12 occasionally I could hit 16 I think I once had a request for 20 and mm -hmm. I think I came out I think I got 18 because what I ended up saying was I'll send it we, we, we just used one guy as a four caddy for, yeah. you know for, for a group that kind of thing so yeah That's on the back of it yeah that was that was roughly what the what the sort of the uh, return was on it yeah so going forward into to next season martin um the reason i'm ringing today as well is obviously we're keen to reward the clubs that have been loyal to this to this season um and actually have used our system you know you're one of the early adopters of our platform um so you know we have clubs in ireland and, and abroad that are paying like 78 grand for access to this system and we know that just doesn't make sense for for yourself and smaller clubs just due to your usage um so like each caddy program we work with is unique and we support caddy masters and having control and adding their own little personal touch and it was interesting that you were the operator of the system this year usually we wouldn't find gms would be the operator but um obviously it's, it's worked well for you um but because of this we believe that we can best serve your caddy program when we work with you like as a true partner um and like we love hearing stories of clubs you know the bottom line benefit of getting an extra 50 green fees i think that is um fantastic um but to allow us to actually support um these smaller clubs we are setting our minimum price um at 940 for access to andy caddy for the 2024 season um any new clubs we bring on we'll be charging 1250 um for access but obviously being a customer for this year we want to give you um a discount on that as well so that will be 25 percent off um what a new customer would pay um so it'd be 940 for the season right right okay is it because what did we do last year did we just did we pay a one-off fee at the beginning or did we just pay it per per caddy right yeah so it was a uh, uh per usage based fee last year um yeah uh, so obviously if if you were to come on next season so that would include like all the support throughout the season um, just yeah. like we did last season um, and then ultimately I think the goal we're going for is ensuring that you get even more green fees through next year um, yeah. and you know as, as I say there like if you're getting fifth you know 
three or four green fees essentially pays us off. Okay. Yeah, so it's, so it's like, so what is it? So it was so it's nine nine forty for the season kind of thing. Yes. So um, as I say, you've got twenty five percent discount there on what a new customer would pay. So it'd be nine forty. Um, yeah. So um, yeah, that would be the annual payment um, for the season. I don't know how that sounds to you. No, no, that's that's everything. So that would be sorted for the season. And as I say, that comes with all the support, all the maintenance as well. So we're we're gonna yeah. continue and improve the system as well. We're not just gonna sit stagnant on it. So that's yeah, that's absolutely everything for the season. Right. Okay. No, that, that should be okay. I just need to bounce it through some people. But yeah, I don't, I don't see a problem with that. So could I maybe give you a buzz tomorrow just to kind of finalise that? And then uh, I... Well, I'll have to, it's, uh, the, the main guy I see is sometimes, uh, I sort of like, I catch up with him through through the week. It's not Sometimes yeah. I can't see him as quickly as that. Yeah, um, absolutely. I'll probably be able to see him in the next week, that kind of thing. Absolutely. No problem. Well, listen, yeah, take your time. And if you have any questions on that beforehand, um, I'll just drop you an email in black and white. Um, okay, yeah. And then, yeah, we'll, we'll catch up. But any questions before that, just give me a shout, all right? Yeah, yeah, no problem at all. All right, pleasure to chat soon, all right? Yeah, okay, that's brilliant. Okay, thanks, Greg. All right, bye. bye. Oh. That was an interesting, so the objection of he needed to speak to his finance department. I don't really think he does need to speak to them and I challenge them on it. Um, but if they, you know, second object, then you just gotta leave them to it. Maybe there is a more optimal way I can deal with that. So, uh, gonna do a few more calls before lunch. Uh, the first one is actually, I'm gonna contact the club that this guy has moved to. Um, obviously a reasonably warm lead. Um, and yeah, I'm not entirely sure if their club has a caddy program, which is who we serve. Um, but it'll be interesting to see. Sorry, just... Good morning. But I was speaking to there over at the PGA show in January. I'm wondering, is he in today? He is, but he's actually in meetings this morning. Can I get him to call you back? Or, um... Okay, uh, I'll maybe give him a ring this afternoon. All right. No problem. Can I see who calls for him? Yes, it's uh, Graham Curry. Uh, so I run a company called Handy Caddy. Work with a few Scottish clubs at the minute. Okay. Now I'll pass on the message that you've you've called. Yeah, I appreciate Andy that. Cad. Okay, you have a lovely day. Thanks for your call. Thank you, Angela. Thank you. Bye bye. Right, right, right. Oh, this is the session of no answers, but you get them. You get them. You get them. <laughs> Keeping it real for you guys. Thought I'd give you a call just before I clocked off for lunch here. It's Graham from Handicaddy. How are we getting on? How you doing? You all right? I'm brilliant. Obviously, yep. it didn't work out for us this season um, going yep. ahead with things. But I think, honestly, it's, it's maybe been a good thing because now we can come back to you and, and actually present the data that we got this season from the Scottish clubs yep. that work with us. Um, so I think, honestly, the one that's most comparable to you, I would say, in terms yep. of size and the number of rounds they've done, um, yep. So we started working with those guys in May um, and throughout the season, on average, we were saving them around about 10 hours every week on schedule. Um, so that obviously compounds to around about 300 hours per year that they have yeah. saved using our system. Um, so I, I guess the question I always ask to clubs now is, um, and the only use case that it would actually be useful to use the system is how would you actually spend those 300 hours if you if you had them back like would that yeah. be useful or you know what would that be spent on oh no it would definitely be useful um music licensing it would, it would just kind of more of a customer my customer uh, focus um, with mm -hmm. everyone but is an interesting one for sure i i'd be curious to actually reach, reach out to those guys and to learn a bit more about what they do because an integration mix there is a, there definitely is a use case for it yeah. Um, are they a Scottish based company or sorry you said they're Swedish no. right Swedish yeah gotcha that's super um, interesting I'm just trying to see if I've got the any 
Artlist.io. It looked like something they were very keen on and, and discussing with you. I think this is maybe a sensible time in the season just to catch you up and, and show you basically the case study of Gullen and, and what they've actually saved um, and then present to you what it would actually look like for you to to work with us next season in terms of costing and all that stuff. Um, we've made it a bit more friendly for clubs to come on and uh, try it for a month and basically have no... Um, like if it doesn't work well for you, you can you can take your money back. So we're making yeah. it very, very easy for clubs to try it. Um, so I'm wondering, is there maybe a time later next week, Stuart, where I can show you all that stuff and and how it would actually work in practice? Uh, let me get my diary. Your name Thursday, uh, which is the ninth of November. Let's catch up then. Lovely. Sounds great. It'll give me a bit of time right. to reach out to these uh, the sweet spot ones as well. All right, meeting confirmed, and also a company that's potentially interested in integrating. Let me. Okay, so there they seem to be like a customer facing tool for golf clubs, um, and they did mention it was interesting to integrate with us. I think they could be very good for uh, visitor focused facilities, which is kind of the market that we serve in golf clubs. So after this, I'm going to reach out to those guys. Um, yeah, seem legit. Of a lot of these are like the big names in golf that are uh, partnered with. So we'll reach out after this. Um, okay, cool. Okay, so what's up, gang? Hope you enjoyed that video. That was a very real cold call calling session I give you there. Obviously, some missed calls, some good calls. In total, we had one demo booked and we had one uh, deal move on to the next stage. So which went on to the decision makers to actually decide if they want to use our system or not. On average, for every 20 calls I make, I usually get one demo booked, which is why I'm really keen to spend a lot of my time cold calling. And for us as um, a high touch uh, B2B startup, uh, which basically means uh, you know it's a lot of customer interaction to actually close a deal cold calls are our best acquisition channel so something i'm i'm going very much all in on over the next few months if you like this kind of content i'm going to be documenting my journey and growing my startup to 1 million annual recurring revenue over the next few years and it'd be awesome to have you along in the journey see you in the next one i'm out of here peace